the students uh, welcome again in the uh, last session of uh, this lecture and uh, the last part of uh, this lecture so students uh, in earlier uh, we have discussed uh, the introduction history and uh, thereafter i defined the crime of the insanity and there are certain crimes uh, and their elements uh, we have discussed one thing you have noticed that in each crime there are uh, uh, the common element uh, in each crime has been provided that is the uh, wider spread wider spread systematic uh, and the discrimination uh, and also there is the knowledge and intention of the crime so in this lecture i am giving you brief uh, 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 brief understanding of uh, these uh, common elements in each crime and uh, uh, why uh, uh, what will because if these elements will not include to constitute these then they these crime will become the uh, common crimes because uh, we are uh, discussing the criminality of those crime uh, being uh, internationally and the this topic is the part of the international criminal law so how internationally it will constitute so here is the topic that is the wider spread and uh, or systematic the attack directed against a civilian population must be wider spread or systematic in order to constitute a crime against civility although the icsty statute unlike the iistr and icc statutes contains no specific explicit requirement that crimes against humanity be wider spread or systematic the united nations secretary general in his report on the isty statute stated that crime against humanity refers to inhuman acts of a very serious nature such as a willful killing torture or rape committed as part of the wider spread or systematic attack uh, against any civilian population on uh, a national political ethnic racial or religious grounds the isty has thus come to recognize this uh, criteria uh, criterion as a requirement for the crimes against humanity uh, though it is in a case uh, law the isty has adopted part of the above definition in cooperating the wider spread or systematic requirement but not the part of the definition related to a discriminatory intent the reason for introduce, uh, introducing the requirement of the wider spread or systematic attack is to distinguish crime against immunity from the isolated or unconnected crimes against individuals this element therefore elevates the crime that might otherwise fall only under the national jurisdiction such murder to crimes of the concern to the international community as a whole such as the murder as a crime against immunity an individual may be liable for crimes against immunity if he or she commits one or more inhuman acts within that uh, uh, broader context the attack must be wider spread or systematic but need not to be both this does not mean that accused must themselves have acted in a wider spread or systematic manner only the attack not the individual acts of the accused must be wider spread or systematic under the established isty jurisprudence wider spread refers to the large scale nature of the attack and the number of targeted persons the isdr appears to have adopted a higher standard as it has defined what a spread is a massive frequent large scale action carried out collectively with the considerable seriousness and directed against the multiplicity of the victims and uh, Uh, another topic uh, that uh, we uh, noticed uh, in the uh, elements of the uh, different crimes uh, which we have earlier discussed the directed the uh, offense must be committed against the directed against any civilian population the term civilian population must be given a broad uh, definition it includes not only the general population but also members of the armed forces who have surrendered or have been uh, rendered uh, 
horse the combat uh, due to wounds illness detention or other cause in times of the peace the civilian population includes all persons except uh, those who have the duty uh, to maintain public order or the legitimate means to use force it can therefore be concluded that the victims of the crimes against humanity must be non combatants which would include under the geneva uh, law uh, prisoners of war and the wounded sick and uh, uh, shipwrecked the civilian population uh, need only be uh, predominantly civilian in nature since the presence of the certain non civilian in their midst does not uh, change the character of the population the presence of military personnel within an uh, intentionally targeted civilian population does not change its civilian uh, character the essence of the crimes against humanity is that population is targeted precisely because of its civilian character the presence of the others who may or may not also be target uh, is irrelevant now the next topic the student the link between the perpetrators contact and the attack the specific act of the accused or so called underlying offense must be part of the wider spread or systematic attack the ist by peace chamber in tatic uh, held that to convict an accused of crimes against humanity it must be proved that the crimes were related to the attack on a civilian population occurring during an uh, armed conflict and that the accused uh, knew that uh, his crimes were so related in other words the acts of the accused must com uh, comprise part of the pattern of the wider spread or systematic crimes directed against a civilian population and that the accused must have known that uh, uh, his act fit into such pattern however the nexus between the accused acts and the armed conflict is not required so it is not necessary that the acts of the accused are committed in the um, midst of that attack in order to be uh, regarded as part of the that attack an offense which is committed uh, before or after the main attack uh, against the civilian population or uh, away from it uh, could be still if uh, sufficiently connected be part of uh, that attack as mentioned in the certain circumstances a single act may comprise a crime against humanity when it occurs as part of the attack the offense must not however be an isolated act, uh, attack uh, an offense uh, would be regarded as an isolated act when it is so far uh, removed from that attack that having considered the context and circumstances in which it was committed it cannot be reasonably be said to have been part of the attack so another the last element uh, uh, repeatedly i earlier mentioned that the uh, element which is the uh, intention and the conduct of the perpetrator the mental elements which require the mens rea i uh, would not um, offer the detailed lecture on that topic because this topic is also very clear we have been is being a student of law and uh, there is a general phenomena and general principle regarding the commission of crime the person must have knowledge of that uh, crime what what he is committing the mental elements the additional element which uh, raises a domestic offense to the international level is the perpetrator's knowledge of the broader context in which that offense occurs in other words the perpetrator must be aware of the circumstances which make the offense a crime against humanity number one because the accused must know that there is a wider spread or systematic attack on the civilian population second uh, he must know that his acts uh, com uh, comprise, uh, comprise a part of that attack alternatively he must at least take the risk that his acts were part of the attack this requirement however does not entail knowledge of the detail of the attack the mental element does not refer to the motive of the accused but only to knowledge of the context the motives of the accused for taking part in the attack are irrelevant and a crime against humanity may be committed for purely personal reasons now so lastly 
the additional requirement of uh, that and that is the nexus with the armed conflict. The crimes against humanity can be committed either during an armed conflict or uh, in times of the peace. Although Article 5 of the ISTY statute require crimes against humanity to be committed in an armed conflict, the requirement serves to uh, define the jurisdiction of the ISTY and is not the part of the definition of the offense. The latter statute of the ISTY, uh, ISTR, ICC, SCSL, and serious uh, crimes uh, panels do not require uh, the link between the crimes against immunity and an armed conflict. It is safe to conclude that today a nexus with the armed conflict is no longer required as the matter of the customary international law. Indeed, indeed the ISTY itself had that the requirement provided in its statute is a deviation from the customary law. In particular, the trial chamber in Tadik. Uh, stated that the requirement of an armed conflict is similar to that Article 6, Clause C of the Nuremberg Charter, which limited uh, the Nuremberg Tribunal's jurisdiction to the crimes against humanity committed before or during the war, although in the case of the Nuremberg Tribunal, jurisdiction was further limited by the requiring that crimes against humanity be committed in execution of or in connection with war crimes or crimes against peace, the Tardic Trial Chamber further held that the inclusion of the requirement of an armed conflict nevertheless deviates from the development of the doctrine after the Nuremberg Charter, beginning with the Control Council Law No. 10, uh, which no longer links the concept of the crimes against immunity with an armed conflict. The Trial Chamber, uh, uh, that case Tardic, uh, I have already uploaded and shared with you and uh, I, uh, many times I uh, refer to this case uh, because this case is very much important and which constitute the crimes of the nature of the international law, which is the part of the statute, which is the ICC and other uh, tribunals. And uh, the students, uh, very briefly, the discrimination requirement, IST, YR and ICC, Article 3 of the ISTR, uh, statute adds an additional element of the discriminatory grounds requiring that crimes against humanity be committed on uh, national, ethnic, racial, or religious grounds. However, ISTY appeals chamber in Tardic concluded that the customary international law, as it results from the gradual development of the international instrument and national case law into the general rules, does not uh, presuppose a uh, discriminatory or uh, a persecutory intent for all crimes against humanity. Such an intent uh, is an indispensable uh, legal ingredients of the offense only with regard to those crimes for which this is expressly required. That is for the Article 5, Clause H of the ISTY Statute concerning various types of the Students, uh, uh, these are the uh, certain uh, topics uh, which arise. Uh, uh, which arise from the earlier discussion on the specific crimes uh, which are mentioned in the ICC statute. And the concept has been given in those uh, statute. Uh, thereafter, I briefly uh, give you our view on those uh, topics in, an, in order to understand and also distinguish this offense from the genocide war crimes and armed conflicts. So uh, I hope uh, this lecture uh, gave you a broader meaning of that crime. Uh, and also, inshallah, uh, uh, I will continue this lecture, this series of lecture regarding the substantive part of the international criminal law. After completing this uh, crime, the the next topic is very much important because the very common uh, crime of the international law of the substantive law that is the genocide and that is the very much important so in next lecture lecture number 12 we will discuss we will uh, understand uh, the uh, crime of genocide thank you very much take care Allah, peace.